So what do you do when you get salsa in your left analog stick? Well, I got a fix for that. What's going on guys? Jordan here. Today we are going to repair my daughter's Nintendo Switch. She thought it was a great idea to be eating chips and salsa while playing Animal Crossing the other day, and then her left analog stick started acting up. Thankfully, the Switch Lite's been out for a while, so I went on eBay. I found replacement analog sticks for it. In fact, the kit that I got came with two sticks, all the tools technically needed, all for about $12 shipped, and surprisingly, even with the current situation we're in, I got it to my door in about six days. So let's go ahead and dive into the Switch Lite and see how easy it is to swap out an analog stick. So what we know for sure is wrong with the Switch is that when you press right on the left stick, sometimes it bounces back. Almost, it's not, it's like the opposite of stick drift, I guess you could say. But I'll show you what I'm talking about here and we'll see if we can make it uh, show up because it's kind of intermittent, but it's definitely noticeable when you're playing a game. You see how it bounces, there you go. See how it kind of bounces back? It won't perfectly stay there, especially if you move it around a little bit. Like, I'm not letting go when it bounces off. <laughs> so, that's why we're replacing this. So we'll go ahead and shut off the system. I will show you what we have here. Put this to the side for a moment. This is the kit that we got from eBay, and it's pretty much got everything that we need, but just in case I do have my precision tool set with me. What this comes with are all the tools that technically you would need to replace the analog sticks along with two actual sticks. We have a Phillips head, a tri-wing, a pick to help separate the housing, two analog sticks that match the color of the lights, and another prying tool. So the switch light is actually really easy to open. Yeah, there's two Phillips on the top, two Phillips on the bottom. Be super gentle because I don't trust these screwdrivers. I don't want them to. Okay. That was really easy. One screw there, third screw, and the fourth screw. In addition, you have four screws on the back here. Those are the tri-wing ones. Once again, I'm being overly cautious because I don't want to strip anything. I'm more concerned about actually shredding the screwdriver itself and not the screws because this is not obviously a licensed screwdriver from Nintendo. So I don't know the the quality of it. So with all four screws removed from the back, top, and bottom, you can go ahead and start prying the, the back plate off. Now, you can actually use where the speakers are located to help start popping it off because those aren't where the speakers are, they're actual speaker portholes. The speakers are internal on the system. But nonetheless, I still want to be gentle with this. A little gentle pops. Perfect. Ideally, I would like to be able to just remove the section needed to get to the actual analog stick to avoid removing as many components as possible. Plus, I want to see how little you actually have to remove to get to the left analog stick. Um, so we're going to remove the speaker, because like I said before, the actual speaker isn't on the bottom of the switch light. It's on the inside, and it has these little, like, pipes that send the audio down to the bottom. You'll see the speaker is right here and it sends the audio down and out the bottom. And so this is one of those things where I actually would want to use now my toolkit that I have and use tweezers to unplug the speaker. There we go, speaker is unplugged. It pops out. We're going to put that, keep those parts together. I'm also going to remove, while I'm here, move the, this little ribbon cable out of the way for a second. Now, I should remove the back plate and disconnect the battery. That would be the, the right thing to do. Which, you know what? Let's do that. Let's play it safe. Let's just remove the back plate here. 
where's the actual battery? Okay, so the battery connects right under here, and I'd like to disconnect it. So what, uh, let's figure out what kind of ribbon that is right there. There's a shit ton of thermal paste on there, isn't there? We're going to gently pull this ribbon out right here. Pop that ribbon off. I think that's actually the analog stick right there. That ribbon. So now what we're gonna do is we just have to remove this board. We should be right where we need to be. Let's try to keep them all together once again, just so that way we're putting it back together. No mistakes are made. This is nerve wracking doing this on a uh, month old switch. And that right there, completely removes the board. Look at that. Traditional D-pad. Man, that's, I'm jealous. Not gonna lie, I'm jealous. Definitely wish Nintendo could figure out their cloud save so I can actually play on a Switch Lite, but you know. Pop out the old analog stick. Let's go ahead and grab one of the new ones here. Perfect fit. Now in theory, everything should go back together exactly as uh, pulled it apart, but that's always in theory. But I'm just kidding anyways. Yeah, this should be a pretty easy reassembly. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna get this board back on here. We need to flip up this right here, which goes into here. that down all the way, make sure that's in, snap it shut to lock that ribbon into place. Next ribbon needs to be the analog stick. Okay, so the last step at this point is just to reinstall the back heat sink plates. And this is, <laughs> this is where it's gonna be the most fun because um, I, I wasn't paying attention to the order of the screws. But if I think if I am correct, I should be able to, get this right. Start with the one in the middle. As I'm looking around here, it's easy to tell where the short ones definitely go. So the single long one, I'll be able to find a, the home for that one pretty easily. All right, so let's go ahead and snap the, uh, the housing back on. Hopefully I didn't completely screw this up. There we go. Oh, I'm turning it on. Didn't intentionally do that, but we're gonna test it out before I put all the screws back in. All right, let's go ahead and test the analog stick out. Make sure that functions. That no issues at all, no jumping around. Everything is perfect. Man. Surprisingly, a very easy repair. All right, let's go ahead and get the screws back in, put this thing back together, and we're all set. It doesn't look like I beat it up too much doing it either. All right, so that wasn't too bad. We have the broken analog stick right here. We have the working switch right here. All button inputs work. I made sure to test that the system is functioning at 100%. And it is, and honestly, as I, I, I have to assume this is a third-party analog stick but it does still feel the same as the Nintendo one. I can't tell the difference whether, whether it comes to texture between the sticks, or the actual feel of the movement, the clicks of the sticks, everything feels the same to me. So I'll be honest that even though this is an all-in-one unit compared to the regular Switch, I found this really easy to work on. I found it really easy to get inside to really see what all the components are. So if you saw the video a while back where I did a modification to a set of my Joy-Cons to give them the atomic purple look, you would see that the Joy-Con is actually significantly harder to work on because there are so many small components inside a small container. So I really did find this to be much simpler and easier to work on. So that being said, I really think the Switch Lite outshines the regular Switch when it comes to repairability. There were definitely some concerns when teardown sites got their hands on these and they realized that it was that they really were the same analog sticks. 
that were on the regular Switch, and there were concerns about replacing them on an all-in-one unit, but honestly, it was super simple, as you guys just saw. So if you feel confident working with small components like that, this is a pretty easy repair. So let me know in the comments below if uh, someone out there had to do this repair themselves, or if this video was somewhat helpful in getting uh, your Switch light repaired. And if you like this video, make sure you do hit the like button. And if you're new here and you're not yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button, I really would appreciate that. You can follow me on all social medias, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. You'll see all my latest videos posted there along with streams because for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't like to share those out to my subscribers. I don't know why. Also, we have a Discord. Come hang out on the Discord. You'll find all those links in the description below. So until next time, this is Jordan. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.